It's your boy High Five Vega back again, and this time we're gonna check out the top five subwoofer amps under two hundred dollars. You might have checked out the top ten subwoofers under one hundred dollars. I want to keep that going and let you guys kind of know what my budget picks are at a given price point. So, with that being said, you know, you know, I'm old and I got my notes. I'm ready to roll. So, without further ado, why don't we go ahead, jump into it, and see what we have. And, and I ain't gonna lie to you guys, I said top five, I've already snuck more in here, and it's starting right now with number five, like as in plural, so I do prefer one over the other, but let's talk about them, okay? And, the, and there's a reason, and it's, you know, it's... It's whatever. It might not even matter to you. So I have two picks here. Number five, the first pick. Now, these are pretty equal. They're both number five. Is the Alpine MRV M500. The homie Derek, he tested this amp. He tested the other number five amp, which is the Rockford Fosgate Prime 500. The first generation, I believe. So he's tested both these amps. They both met and exceeded their rating. So that's very good. That's one of the easiest ways to make it on the list. Make sure you do what it says on the box. So, start with the Alpine. It has four gauge power and ground. That's perfectly acceptable for its power rating, which is 300 watts by one at four ohms, 500 watts by one at two ohms. It has eight gauge speaker outs, which is very good. It's a compact size. It's $140, you know, price changes on Amazon from day to day so everything I mentioned will have a link below where you can purchase it it could be an affiliate link or you know if I can't find it on Amazon I'll put a link to where you can purchase it so this one $140 the Rockford Fosgate Prime 500 very similar it's rated 320 watts by one at 4 ohms 500 watts by one at 2 ohms again 140 ish dollars online so prices are going to vary a little bit it has four gauge power and ground inputs eight gauge speaker it is compact as well but it includes a bass knob so to me that gives this the edge like i said derek tested both these amps i will leave a link below so you guys can check them out they are very very close i don't want to give away the power ratings please check out derek's videos that's my number fives if you need the bass knob, go with the Rockford Fosgate. If you don't, go with the Alpine. Either way, you were definitely not going to be disappointed. They're both great amps uh, from great names. If you want to spend a little bit more, you can get the second gen Prime. It's going to be a little over 200 right now because it's really new. So it's got a lot of upgraded features that, that brings it more up to par with the punch level of amps. So definitely check that out if you want to spend a little over 200. Now we've got the 500 watt amps out of the way. Let's talk about some, let's get into some real power here. My number four pick. This has been a very solid amp and it too has met and exceeded its ratings. And it is the Audio Pipe APC LE 1500.1. Derek has tested this amp as well. It is very impressive. It's kind of a mainstay at this under $200 price point. The ratings are 600 watts at 4 ohms, 950 watts at 2 ohms, and 1500 watts at 1 ohm. There is a downside, and that is that it only includes 4 gauge power and uh, ground inputs. So that's unfortunate with the amount of power that this amp is capable of, but you can always use a dual uh, connector. Now, the newest one may have one aught terminals. I didn't check that, but the one I'm leaving a link to below is an older generation, and the price on it is $180. It certainly does what it says it's going to do. It even exceeds that rating, and these amps are pretty much just rock solid. That's why they came in the number four spot. I think that it's a great amp, and you will not be disappointed, especially if you're looking for power at a under $200 price point. This one is going to definitely get you where you want to be, and 
not very many uh, amps are going to beat this dollar for watts. So it's a very efficient amp as well. Number three. This one might be controversial because some of you guys love this brand. Some of you guys hate this brand. It's the Hyphonics ZRX 2416. This amp is the first amp that for sure gives us the one watt power and ground inputs, which is very nice. Now, let's get to the ratings. We're rated 650 watts at 4 ohms, 1200 watts at 2 ohms, and 2400 watts at 1 ohm. This amp is n probably not going to meet its ratings, but these amps don't miss their RMS ratings by very much. I haven't seen this particular amp dynode, but I've seen a lot of Hyphonix amps dynode, and they're typically you know, a couple hundred watts off. So even though this one doesn't make its rating, I think it, that it is a solid value. And uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty nice amp. You can get it for $190, just a little bit more than the audio pipe. It includes the bass knob, which is very nice. Something I didn't mention on the audio pipe is that it includes the bass knob, and it also includes a fuse holder. You don't have any internal fuses, so you're going to need that external fuse. It's nice to have that the Hyphonics has fuses built in. It's 140 amps worth of fuses. You're probably around 2,000 watts. You are roughly in the same range with this amp as you are with the audio pipe. You may get just a little bit more out of this amp, I believe, and that's why it took my number uh, three spot. The Hyphonics, love it or hate it, they've been around, they've been solid, and uh, you know people have done well with those. Number two and number one. This one for me was a tough pick because I recently purchased one of these amps and it and I wanted something under two hundred dollars. I wanted it to be reliable. I wanted it to do a decent amount of power, a good amount of power, and uh, I just I had a hard time picking between these two. Price wanted out for me in the end. I was able to get one of these cheaper, but let's go into number two. You guys is kind of already know I'm an old Ryan fanboy. I mean, look right here. What's that? And what's that over there? But the new Orion's a little bit different. You know, it's not the old school stuff, but it's the Orion XTR 1000.1. Now, this amp typically sells for over 200, but I've been seeing it in quite a few spots for under 200. In fact, it's around the 180 range, and it's. You know, if you've seen the new amps dynoed on Derek's channel, he hasn't dynoed this one. He's done the 1500. They always, always, always exceed the ratings, and sometimes by double. So this has, which this is a bit of a downside for this amp. Even though it's a 1,000-watt amp, we know that it's probably at least 1,500 watts or, or more. Four-gauge inputs. So we're with that, and outside of the Hyphonics, every other one has got four-gauge input so that's just something you're going to have to deal with with the under 200 dollar range it's rated 400 watts at 4 ohms 700 watts at 2 ohms 1000 watts at 1 ohm it does include the bass knob so that's a very solid deal i almost wanted to buy this amp just because i haven't seen one dynode and i wanted to see what kind of power it puts out but i imagine you're going to get a, a minimum of 1500 watts and uh, it's it's a good looking amp. You know, I just dig the look of it. That's why I was really leaning toward this one. And I hadn't seen this particular model dynoed. But I went with a different model instead. And this model, if you guys have asked me the best amp under $200 before, whether it be on 12E Talk or on my channel, I have steered a lot of people this way. Pioneer GMD 9601. The model I'm picking for my number one is the 9701. It's the 1200 watt amp. It's rated 500 watts at 4 ohms, 800 watts at 2 ohms, 1200 watts at 1 ohm. It can be found for around $150, believe it or not. That price floats between $150 on the low end, $170, $180 on the high end. And it is a fan fantastic amp i haven't got a chance to dyno the new one i've got it you'll see a test on it soon but it's going to be my main amp so i have some juice something to play with on my subs it does include a bass knob it does have four gauge 
uh, input. So that's unfortunate. I believe the speaker outs are eight gauge, but at $150, this amp is an absolute steal. I cannot recommend it enough. If you want something a little bit different, maybe go towards the Orion XTR 1001, which is going to be very comparable in power, maybe even more powerful than the Pioneer, but this amp has just been rock solid. It's compact. I like the new looks. I like the, uh, they went away from the carbon fiber and they just got like a flat black on top, which I really dig. And it's a fantastic amp. So that's my picks up until this point. We'll kind of run back through them. So at five, we have the Rockford Fosgate Prime 500 and the Alpine MRV 500. At number four, we have the Alpine APCLE 1500.1. At number three, we have the Hyphonic Zeus ZRX 2416. At number two, the Orion XTR 1001. And at number one, we have the Pioneer GMD 9701. This wouldn't be a top five or a top 10 or a top 20 list without at least one honorable mention and I have it if this amp didn't exceed the $200 price range it probably would have took the number one spot simply for the power output that it produces and it is the Teramps HD 3000 this amp is $205 everywhere you look you can look at Amazon you can look at eBay it doesn't matter you can look at you know all the authorized resellers $205 across the board it's a fantastic value it's rated 1140 at 4 ohms 2025 at 2 ohms and 3000 watts at 1 ohm and this amp does its ratings and exceeds the ratings in every single impedance so it's a very, very powerful amp. It does have downsides. This too only has the four gauge inputs. Now they rectified this with the Smart 3, which I believe runs around 265, 270. You got the one on inputs and you've got the smart technology built in. Definitely check out Derek's video on the Smart 3, but it was so far off that the HD 3000 is what made my list for honorable mention. At under $200, you're getting a very good value with any of these amps. And I think you would be happy with uh, with one through five, which is actually six, because I included two at number five and honorable mention, which brings me up to seven. And oh man, all the rules are out. We don't know what's going on. But if there's any amps that you thought I should have included, or maybe taking the spot of something that I have picked, please leave it in the comments below. We'll chat it out. I'll, I want to know your guys' picks. I don't know everything that's out there. I haven't got to experience everything that's out there. So please help me with your knowledge, and uh, we'll learn together. So that being said, I appreciate you guys checking it out. I hope you enjoyed this top five video. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it, Click that subscribe button, hit the little bell, do all that type of stuff, share the video. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Shout out to all my Patreon supporters, but a special shout out goes to $6 or more members. 2001 Monolithic, The Third Era, G Nava, Joaquin Juarez, Paul Smith, Byron Chambliss, The Karate Guy, Jason Zemer, Travis McClendon, Brandon Hanna, William Berg, William Inhibit, and Mike Schneider. For as little as $2 a month, you can join the team and get exclusive patron only content not available on youtube if you'd like to help me with my goal of reaching one new patron month check me out patreon.com slash high five vega